Hello and welcome. It's almost July, so it's time to plan the next bullet journal setup. And spoiler alert, this is my favourite setup so far, and I think it might end up becoming your favourite too. The theme for July is Galaxy, and it was a spontaneous decision. At the start of the year, I made a rough plan of the potential prompts I could do for the entire year. There is wiggle room, any of the prompts could easily be changed. But because this is my first year ever bullet journaling, the options are endless. Plus, I can easily do seasonal prompts, because they're obvious and I've never done them before. I really liked floral. Even though it was a little bit basic, it was fun to choose a simple prompt that I had lots of supplies to go with. I also stuck with beach because it's seasonal and fun. In the end, I decided to push back the July prompt to August because it's pretty similar to beach. But the original prompt for August was something to do with gifts and presents because it's my birthday month. I wasn't a huge fan of the concept. I guess the idea is that the theme is centered around celebration you could use bold colours with confetti or ribbons. So whilst it's not a strong theme, it could actually look really pretty. If you've been following my channel for a while, you might know that I love painting galaxies. Since I wasn't a huge fan of the birthday theme, I thought, you know what, why not just make galaxies? I haven't painted any for a long while, so let's give it a try. It could have gone horrifically wrong, the paper could have ripped and pulled, and it could have gone awful. But luckily it didn't. The notebook I'm using is from Notebook Therapy, and it hasn't been amazing, I've got to say. For the very first setup, I used watercolour, and it warped like crazy, it peeled up the paper a little bit, and I just wasn't happy with it at all. But I've got to say, in this particular instance, it handled the watercolour really well. Yes, the paper warped a bit, but the experience wasn't bad. And I think the key difference here is because other than wetting the page with water, there wasn't very much water on my brush. It was mostly paint, so I think the issue might be more with water than the actual paint. To begin with, I wet the paper a lot because I felt like it wouldn't stay wet for long and it didn't. The water initially dried quite quickly. I think the best way to combat this is really just to try and work as fast as you possibly can. I've sped up the footage but honestly, even at normal speed, I kind of look sped up. There are moments when I'm sitting and then I'm standing just to try and move as fast as I can. I stuck to my usual technique, wetting the paper, adding the paint, and that's pretty much it. I only did one layer for each of these spreads because I don't think layering is really possible in a notebook like this. If you'd like to know the exact steps I took, I'll leave a galaxy tutorial down below. It's kind of old, but I think it explains my process very well and I haven't changed anything since then. I also love the galaxy I painted in that video. But you know what? I love painting galaxies. There's something fun about dropping more and more paint on the paper until it's completely covered. It's a fun process and if you haven't tried it before then I definitely recommend you should paint a galaxy. I actually have a couple of original galaxy paintings up on my Etsy and I also have some prints on imprint because I've painted so many over the years. I'm not sure exactly what route I'll be going with my online store in the future. I'll be talking more about this in a future art vlog, but honestly, Etsy isn't bringing in any traffic. For a marketplace, it really wants you to do all of the work. And right at the beginning, when you don't have any sales, that's really hard. I have heard that Etsy will start to push your products once you have 100 or 200 sales. But how do you get there? I guess ads are an option, I'm not sure. I am considering starting a website with a store for physical products instead of using InPrint for print and stickers and Etsy to sell original art and digital phone wallpapers. It's all very spread out and I think that's partly what's been making it so hard to get sales on Etsy. There's also a big price disparity between the two products. But I have commission slots on there too. Going the physical route has a lot of steps as well. Space, inventory, packaging, a website, Shopify, shipping. There is so many things to consider. I would love to produce my own stickers and prints, but I think the first step will be to make a Patreon, and then we'll think about that in the future. 
The day before this setup, I painted all the spreads using watercolour. So I had no pencil lines underneath. I had no plan. I technically could have added some pencil lines after adding the paint, but the notebook was so big and warped that it needed to be flattened under some books overnight, so I couldn't do that. For this setup, we are winging it, which you might be able to tell. I'm using the silver and gold metallic markers along with a white Posca. They didn't show up that well on the background, especially the gold, that one was disappointing. The silver looks pretty good, but it's kind of hard to see on camera. Metallics only really look good at certain angles and overhead is not one of them. Because I didn't have any pencil lines and I couldn't really see the dots anymore, I kind of just went for it. For the monthly layout, I just added numbers in roughly the right area and it kind of works. For the weeklies, I used seven pieces of paper just to roughly plan where each box could go. But as you can see, I didn't really stick with it. Originally, I planned to stick in paper boxes, but honestly, I love the background too much. I didn't want to cover it up, so that's why there's just random floating boxes. I think my favourite colour theme is the red on the cover page, but I also love the blue-green weekly spread, which was mostly Viridian. What colour combo is your favourite? Honestly, I think they all worked pretty well. I had some washi tape, papers and stickers that all fit the theme, so I popped them in the corners to add a little bit of mixed media. Though I loved the background so much that I really could have just left it and not added anything, but that would have made for a bit of a boring video. The funny thing about this setup is that the combined footage was actually less than every other setup I've ever done. Even though it was spaced out over two days, each spread I painted took about five minutes. And the second day was so much faster because most of the page had already been done. One of the best things about using watercolour is that it's a pretty cheap medium. If I were to cover entire pages like this with markers, the markers would dry up. I don't know how quickly, but it feels more wasteful. Especially when compared to other paints, because you don't need to mix watercolour with a white to make it lighter, you can literally just add water. And honestly, I think this is one of the reasons why I love using watercolour so much. I like to use mediums where I feel like I'm free to experiment and have fun without being wasteful. Don't get me wrong, tubes of watercolour can really be expensive. But they do feel more cost efficient when compared with other mediums, especially if you're using paint from a pan rather than a tube. So far in this bullet journal we've used brush markers at the beginning, watercolour, gouache, collage, posca, and now we're back to watercolour. So what's left to try? I do have alcohol markers now. I tried some hoo hoo markers for the very first time and it's a really interesting video so I'll leave that one below if you've not seen it. I'm pretty certain alcohol markers would go through this page though, right? I mean, they go through sketchbook paper, so I feel like they would go through journal paper. The only reason I think maybe they wouldn't is just because this paper is so smooth, it has like a surface on top of it, and that could resist the alcohol markers from going through, but it's still a slim chance. I would like to try it though. There's also colour pencils and neo colour pastels. I think either of these could transfer onto the next page, but it could be cool to test it just to see. Interestingly, the pastels don't transfer at all in my daily doodle diary, but they do a lot in the Strathmore 500 sketchbook, which is really interesting because obviously that paper is much better, but maybe that's why it is. They don't transfer at all on the lined paper. I think I would need to sharpen the neo colours though if I was going to do a bullet journal setup with those, because right now they're very stubby and hard to control. I would not be able to write with them and I wouldn't be able to draw anything nice. But you know what, that could be a really fun idea. Colour pencils too, I think they could work. I don't see why not. The only reason would be the transfer, and I guess at least if you give it a try then you know. So if it makes a mess, then it is what it is. Just don't use it again. It does mean that the bullet journal tour next year could be very messy if we have a lot of transfer on the pages though, but at least then we'll know what mediums work and what don't. That might actually be a really good idea because then I could do almost like a review of this journal 
It's from Notebook Therapy. Though I'm pretty sure all of their journals use the same paper, they're just slightly different GSM. And that could be really good to show what works and what doesn't. The pros and cons, because I'll have used it for pretty much everything by then. I think that's a cool idea. I think that could be a pretty cool thorough review. So if you're in the position like I was last year where there's so many journals out there and they're so expensive and you're trying to find the right one, it could be a video that thoroughly explains what you can do in the journal. I think that could be cool. Another potential medium to consider could be ink. But the coloured ink I have is by Winsor & Newton and it does go through the page. So I'd only be able to use black. That could actually be really good though, that could be quite cool. We could create black and white spreads that are really detailed and it could look really different to everything that we've done so far. That could be a really cool idea. Like no collage, no anything else, just black and white ink. I hope you like the setup, I hope you've enjoyed watching me create it over the space of two days and if you have then please like and subscribe. I upload new videos every Thursday and Sunday so I would love to see you then. I hope you like the flip through, relax and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!